Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to tackle some projects that have been uh, driving me crazy and it is time to get them done. So you're going to kind of spend the uh, morning in the garden with me as I get various projects done. Obviously we are sitting here in front of the uh, house, the front yard, and you will see my lovely overgrown boxwoods behind me. And then you will see this gorgeous sweet potato vine that is extremely happy, needs to be trimmed back, We've got some weeding to do. We have got some fertilizing to do. It is a very warm July morning. It is about 10 o'clock in the morning, so I'm already running behind, but that's all right. This is the first time I've gotten into the garden in about two weeks because of all the traveling that we have been doing here lately. So I am super excited to be in the garden and uh, my little furry companion is also very, very happy to be back in the garden with me. So. We're going to try to work with purpose and move with purpose because it is hot. Like I brought her out this morning to go to the bathroom at like 630 and I was like, oh my word, it toasty. So we're going to move with purpose. Now behind me, you will see we have got this uh, nice hedge of boxwoods in the front of our house. You've been with us a couple of times before as we have trimmed this. Nothing really glamorous about trimming boxwoods, but it makes a huge difference, obviously. And honestly, we are way, way behind on trimming these. So that is going to be the first topic that we are going to tackle. So let me get everything set up and then we're going to get those trimmed up and show you how I'm going to do that. We're gonna tackle these boxwoods and get them knocked out really quickly, hopefully. So one, these are, we believe these are winter gym. We planted these um, probably 15 years ago. We've been in our house 19. I think we planted these 15 years ago. We keep it really simple in front of our house. We have got massive color everywhere else. Um, and we don't extend these beds because of the way that water drains through the for, from our uh, front yard because, you know, water is an issue here. So we just keep it really simple. I love boxwoods. I know some people don't. I personally love boxwoods. Um, but yes, these are winter gem as best that we can know. I do think that their life expectancy is going to be um, kind of short because on the back side they get zero sun and they're starting to have just a lot of wood and not a lot of green foliage and they're just getting massive. So it's going to be, I'm just going to kind of play it by ear as far as how much I trim these back, but clearly they need to be shaped up. They are in massive. <laughs> They're like, please show us some love. So that is what we're going to do today. Of course, I have my electric steel trimmers. This is the steel HSA 66. We've had these for quite a few years now. There may be a newer model out there, but I love that they are electric because super easy to manage. It's lightweight and it's not as loud and it's just really easy for me to manage. So I love those. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go in there and shape them up clean everything up, get the bed weeded because there are some weeds on the edge of the grass, um, flower bed from the grass coming in. So we're gonna get all that cleaned up. I would love to be able to mulch this today. Simple reason we're not gonna mulch today, we ran out of mulch. So the mulch truck has not come back. So once it comes back, we will come back through here and obviously get it nice and mulched, which is like the lipstick or the earrings on the flower bed. It just makes it look just supreme. So. That's all right today. Main goal today, get these trimmed, get these cleaned up. Then we're going to fertilize the hanging baskets. They have filled out so incredibly nice. So I'm going to show you how to fertilize because a lot of people are asking, how do I fertilize um, my annuals? So I'm going to show you how incredibly easy it is. But first things first, we're going to get these trimmed. Um, basically, I would like to um, make them a little wider at the top and then bring them in. Uh, we're just going to see how it goes, but get these all shaped up. So we're just going to kind of set up the camera. Um, you're going to watch me work. Hopefully we won't run into a black snake. A couple of years ago, Jackson and I were doing this very thing. We had a black snake in one of the, one of the boxwoods. So hopefully there's no surprises, no yellow jackets. I got my faithful companion right here. So hopefully she'll give me a little heads up if I start to run into something I shouldn't have.
right, my friends, so the boxwoods are trimmed and oh my goodness, it is, uh, I am a hot, sweaty mess right here. And Brenna is with me uh, trying to keep her attention on me today and not the sweet customers who are visiting us. Uh, sweet girl likes treats. And so they're trimmed. I am soaking wet with sweat dripping off the face and I'm in the shade. So there you go. What we're gonna do now is the cleanup. So I'm just gonna rake everything out. Go ahead and weed while I'm doing that. Rake, weed, throw it in the back of Johnny, and then we will uh, go ahead and move on to fertilizing and trimming up this beautiful sweet potato vine that is overtaking uh, my son patients because it's just such a happy camper. So. The progress continues. I did get a little bit probably in certain areas um, into some um, some like dead growth. I don't want to prune it back anymore because I want to see overall green and not any brown, obviously, right? Uh, so I do think that these boxwoods, their their life is, is probably uh, limited here in these flower beds within, I would say, probably the next year, definitely the next two years. So. They look great now, they look so much better. So we're just gonna go with that, get everything cleaned up and uh, keep gr sweet girl here focused on some yummy treats. All right, we'll see you back here in a second. Good girl. Okay, sweet friends, um, <laughs> the boxwood project is complete. They have been trimmed, we have cleaned up, we have blown, we have gotten the weeds out. The only thing that, that is left to be done as far as the boxwood bed is to mulch it. And once we get a delivery of fresh mulch, then we will come in and um, mulch it. Uh, my fellow gardeners or uh, the ones that <laughs> deal with heat and humidity, my southern people and other parts of the country that are very hot and humid. Um, green probably was not the best shirt for me to wear because it shows um, sweat really well. But, you know, I could go change my shirt and I could freshen up, but I am gonna wear my sweaty shirt like a badge of honor because if you are gardening in the end of July in the south or anywhere where it is hot, this is what's gonna happen to you. You are gonna get completely sweaty and you are gonna be soaking wet. That is the joy of gardening in hot, humid areas. And 98% of the time I was in the shade. So there you go. So my people who live in dry areas or areas that have like 0% humidity practically or very low dew point, um, enjoy that. <laughs> enjoy not, you know, gardening in soup. So what we're gonna do today next is it's time for me to fertilize. And we have gotten lots of questions about um, how do I fertilize my annuals? What's the best practices? Like, I don't know how to fertilize my annuals. So I'm just gonna show you really simple. I think a lot of people start to overthink when, you know, fertilizing. And it's, I promise, once you take the fear out, the basics is really, really simple. Now, you're gonna wanna start with some really great quality water-soluble fertilizer. And you're only using this water-soluble fertilizer on your annuals. I do not use water-soluble fertilizer on perennials or hydrangeas, none of that only my annuals and really those that are like my super flowers. So my, my super tunias, my super bells. Um, today we're gonna do angel wing begonias that have in the baskets that also have diamond frost in it. I've got some super tunia mini vista whites behind the camera uh, at the edge of the sidewalk. We're gonna fertilize those. So that is what we're gonna fertilize, right? Annuals, especially flowering annuals because Food equals flowers. The one thing that you're not gonna have to fertilize a ton, um, begonias in general don't need a ton of fertilizer, but because I planted these angel wings later and I trimmed them back really severe, I need to go ahead and give them a little extra food. Impatience, sun patients and patients in general do not like to be fed. If you're gonna feed them, maybe you feed them twice in the summer, three times in the summer, once a month, that kind of thing. Begonias again, as general, don't like a lot of fertilizer. Your coleuses typically don't need a lot of fertilizer. You're thinking of things that have massive flower power. Now, what are you gonna fertilize with? I personally only use Proven Winners 
water soluble fertilizer. This is what we sell at the nursery. This is what we use. This is what I use as a home gardener here in our flower beds and the flower beds at the nursery. This is just a fantastic, great food for these plants. Um, your, um, your ratios, it's a 24, 12, 17. So that gives you an idea on the different ratios um, of that and if you can't find water soluble proven winners water soluble fertilizer uh my next go-to would be jacks jacks is a fantastic very reputable brand that makes really great high quality um, water soluble fertilizers and and just products in general so if you can't find proven winners hopefully you'll be able to find jacks now inside you have um you have your little measuring scoop it comes with a scoop and it comes with two packets of the dry powder so this is really easy y'all i promise so what we're going to do is i have a watering can this is a two gallon watering can i am going to give each one of these hanging baskets a full two gallons of my water soluble fertilizer it is simply one large scoop of this fertilizer per one gallon of water so if this is a two gallon watering can how many scoops am i doing yep two scoops so two scoops in here and i like to put the fertilizer in first so when i add the water with the hose it kind of mixes it up i have found personally if i add the water first and then add the fertilizer i have to stick my hand down in there and zhuzh it around to get it to dissolve which is not the end of the world, but worked a little smarter than harder, so eliminate that step. Because these hanging baskets are absolutely massive, remember these are like the 24 inch in diameter and they're like 18 inches deep, they are extremely heavy. So I am not gonna be just willy nilly taking these up and down. If you have like the, you know, a, a 10 inch or a hanging basket that's light, like on my back porch, you can absolutely take them down, set them in a tub, fertilize them and let them sit there for about 30, 45 minutes. Because that way I know with hanging baskets, sometimes we feel like all the water just like runs out and we just wasted all that great fertilizer. Get a tub, get some sort of big, large tub. If it's like a Tupperware container, fertilize it, let each basket sit for about 30 to 45 minutes pick it up, let it drain, and then hang it back up. Fantastic. Proven Winners recommends doing it every seven to 10 days. That would be in an ideal, perfect world. Personally, I'll just be honest, I can't do that. Like I just, it, it doesn't work. So if I can do it every two weeks, every three weeks, then I am feeling really good about myself. So any food is better than no food, but you will see a massive difference. If you can do it every seven to 10 days, that is awesome and your plants are going to love you and, and perform great for you so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you really simple one and then of course these hanging baskets are tall so i do have my ladder so i'm going to scoop them up fill it up and then i'm going to do that four times so i can get all four of these hanging baskets fed All right, my friends. So here we are at the edge of the uh, sidewalk. Gonna go up there. Remember we planted these two containers of the Supertunia Mini Vista Whites. You will notice, I think you can see that I have uh, terracotta saucers underneath them. And all you're gonna do is just come in and you're gonna water and not let the dog drink the water because it is fertilizer water. <laughs> she hasn't learned the difference yet. Um, and so I'm just gonna divide this equally amongst these two. Now, I love having the saucers on my containers like this of, of my super tunias um, because that way when I come in and I make sure that they get plenty of water, they are looking slightly crispy right now. Uh, Jerry and I were, you know, at in Grand Haven, Michigan at Spring Meadow for several days. And while my sweet children do relatively a really nice job of taking care of the plants while we're gone and they did water them maybe they didn't water them as much as i would have so they look a little 
they look a little crispy, but that's all right. They will bounce back um, with this fertilizer and then that good consistent water. So that's it. So I can already see that there is the fertilizer water in the saucer this is a great way to make sure that especially if your containers are somewhat dry like mine are that it goes through and sucks it up and then the the saucer there is of course that you make sure that your soil gets really nice and saturated um, and so that's just a great tip when you have a container that's not an aquapot it's not self-watering container and you need to make sure that those containers get nice and really well watered and all the way through then that is a great thing for you now when you have containers and you um you know because life happens and sometimes they get completely dried out when you are whether this is just regular watering or whether you're fertilizing you're going to have to go back over that a couple of times because when that potting soil is completely dry and you put water on it it runs straight through like it will immediately come out of the pot whether it's a container like this or it's a uh, you know plant that's still in its nursery pot whatever so you're going to either going to have to come back and water it two three four times nice and slow let that water sink through or put it in a saucer or put it in like that shallow tub let that water go all the way through that soil and really saturate that soil so if you have something that's constantly drying out either move it up to a big container put a saucer underneath it but frequent watering to make sure that your soil is nice and saturated is the key. All right. All right. Let's go look at the boxwoods. Let's look at the whole project all together and uh, say goodbye. All right, our jobs for today are complete. Brenna and I have had a very successful morning in the garden and it feels wonderful to have this done. The boxwoods look so much better. It, it actually looks like a gardener lives here instead of having those wild woolly boxwoods. But you know what, y'all? Do it when you can, right? We, perfection is a completely false concept. It does not exist here on earth. So just get out there and do what you can. And if you have projects that are driving you crazy, try to set aside, set aside some time to get it done. Like these boxwoods were driving me absolutely insane because you know we spend a ton of time on our front porch. So to have this done, just makes me feel so good now yes but when we again when the mulch arrives we'll come back here it'll really make me feel good then but to get that fertilized the hanging baskets fertilized my super tenure is fertilized um, got some weeding done down through the sweet potato vine we'll get to that project on another day you know do what you can don't kill yourself but just whatever that project is that's been driving you crazy try to block out a little time and get it done so my friends, have fun out there in your garden. Stay hydrated. It is hot out here. Um, and as always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational and a little humor mixed in uh, as always. We so appreciate you. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.